Welcome to the Eye on Annapolis Local Business Spotlight. There are thousands of locally owned businesses in the area, some small and some large. Some you may know and others you don't. But one thing they all have in common is a great story, and we want to share it with you. Join us every Saturday as we talk to the founders, the owners, and the managers of local businesses you have come to know and love, and those you will come to know and love. Now here's your host, John Frenet, with this week's Local Business Spotlight. Well, it's not often that I get down into St. Michael. Not that often that I get to St. Michael's, and it's very rare that I get here before 9 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> when I'm here for a good reason, uh, time to make the donuts at a bakery store, if you will, but it's the Gluten-Free Bakery Girl, and we're here with Trisha King. How are you today? Great. Doing good today. Well, you know, thank you for inviting me down here to St. Michael's. It wasn't really a tough decision. Yeah, welcome. Welcome here. <laughs> uh, such a beautiful town on the it eastern is. shore. It's not far from Annapolis and Anne Arundel County. It's uh, always great to get down here and see. Yeah, uh, it's a nice little getaway place. <laughs> It, it, it's a getaway place. It's a potential retirement place. It's mm -hmm. everything else here. But yeah. you are the gluten-free bakery girl. Yeah. <laughs> and a lot of people uh, in Annapolis that I've talked to comment saying, I see her trucks all over the place. Now, it might be just one truck. I don't know that you see everywhere. but it's <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we, we, we make our rounds all over Annapolis with our deliveries and to the coffee shops. And well, what is, the your, what is your background? I mean, you are. You, you are the store and the person and the yeah. baker and everything else. What's well, I've been interested in baking and cooking since I was little. I mean, you know, everybody, it's, you know, everybody says Julia Childs, but that's, you know, I would watch her and I just had this interest in food. And I remember making puff pastry when I was little, you know, with my sister. And it's just the food has been in my life. And my dad would cook and bake bread and I just got the the knack for it and enjoy it and then as I got older um it just became part of me huh. and I went to school for interior designing okay. and but interior designing you know you have these um these classes where you have to be you know creative classes and get the creative juices flowing and I would do those activities but every time I was like oh coming up with all these great things to bake or cook and I'm like I should be doing this and so I graduated from interior designing and opened up my own um, personal chef business, the Purple Pomegranate in Salt Lake, Utah. Oh, I worked. So, okay. yeah. I, I you know, I've heard that. so many stories of different people that have gone to school for one thing and, and immediately turned around. One that comes to mind is a friend of mine that uh, studied uh, medical. Mm -hmm. And he, he, yeah. he got his MD and he was going to be this brilliant, some kind <laughs> of a surgeon. And he walked into T. Rowe Price down in Baltimore. I was like, so what's this all about? And he said, you know, I've got the medical background and he ended up running like a successful biotech fund. And it was totally financial as opposed to, to Yeah, medical. it's like it's college hysterical. and university, they get those creative juices or whatever it is that you're interested in to help you find exactly what you should be doing. Right. Yeah. Well, Gluten-Free Bakery Girl is at 116 North Talbot Street. Is it Talbot or Talbot? Um, depends on where you're from because um, it's, you know, Talbot. Baltimore, so it's Talbot, okay. Baltimore. Yeah, okay. That's how people okay. have told me right. since I it's, moved here. <laughs> it's, it's, it's on the main drag at St. Michael's yes. on the left. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you get there. Um, and I mean, how long has Gluten Free Bakery Girl been in business? Uh, well, 2011. So, congratulations! Thank on you. Twelve years. Yeah. Now, thank going you. On. Yeah, I started in a little um, sandwich shop. Um, the sandwich shop wasn't gluten-free, but I would clean everything down and do a few gluten-free items just to get people um, to know about gluten-free and the products. And I used to be called um, Patisserie Patrice, um, but people couldn't remember that. So I changed okay. it to Gluten-Free Bakery Girl. And then um, I moved into this. It's no longer there, but it was the Market House in Easton. And it was this thriving little market with all these different eight different uh, vendors, stalls. And I moved in there and I said, hey, if you build me a kitchen, I'll get wholesale customers and I do wedding cakes. And so they did. And I ever since then, I've just you know, been making pastries and cakes and wholesale customer. You know, my first wholesale customer was um, Leeward Market in Eastport. Leeward's great. Yeah. Leeward. So. <laughs> well, it's, it's awesome that you started out as the little, I said the little baby steps, okay? I'm, yeah, you know, definitely. I'm, 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 yeah. It, it, a, a side gig in, in, a, in a store to your own stall to your own business, which mm -hmm. is, now why why gluten-free? Why is, um, I mean, well, obviously that's yeah. a dietary 
choice requirement for many people. But why yeah. why did you go with that? Well, in 97, I was I I would eat and I would kind of get sick and I didn't know why. I don't have celiac disease. I do have a um, intolerance to gluten. Um, but it would bother me. And so I did this white, I mean, all flour and all sugar-free like diet. And I did it for like a lot, quite a while. And I, I really felt better. Um, and then I had my personal chef business after I did the interior designing um, university. And my customer, my first customer for the personal chef business, she had rheumatoid arthritis really bad. And so she was everything for you know, no corn, no tomatoes, no anything oh, really? that caused that, that affects- yeah, anything that caused inflammation in her body. And so I was cooking with tapioca flowers and rice flowers and you know things that were and just experimenting to help her to be able to eat you know some normal food. And then I'm like, well, I ache and you know my joints quite often. And so I'm like, I'll give it a couple weeks. So I did. I went gluten free for a couple weeks, and I was I put the going you know gluten-free kind of in 97 up to what I was doing in 2000 I was like oh you know I understand it now that's why you know the inflammation in my body and it reduces that and then I started learning more about and and, um, celiacs and gluten-free and I love baking and so I just started you know trying different things and then I came back here as um, assistant pastry chef at the Ennett Perry Cabin and so great place to eat yeah I went all these different places to learn baking and because it's been my favorite thing to do um, and then I was like I'm going to do this gluten free and my friend's like oh it's it's not going to work you know you're never going to be able to have a gluten free bakery yeah. <laughs> yeah have a gluten free bakery <laughs> and you know but then I just kept trying different recipes and then I just nailed down the flavor and the texture and I'm like, this is what I should be doing. And that's how it brought me to having the sandwich shop and in introducing. And that friend I see now, they're like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe you did it. <laughs> yeah, that's that's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. So, yeah. That's so, great. Well, you know, it's funny because, I mean, diets have really changed. I mean, when I was a kid, I mean, I'm much older than you. But, I mean, when I was a kid, I mean, you never heard of allergies. I mean, and now I know, you know, when my kids were really little, so that, and that was like 30 years ago or 25 years ago, they're they're turning around handing notes from the school saying, oh, well, so-and-so's got an allergy to this and that and everything. I mean, <laughs> yeah. people's diets are really, I don't know whether it's changed or whether it's just becoming to the thing. Well, but I, I think mean, people are more to say that they have, you know, peanut, I've always known about a peanut allergy. I mean, from when I was younger. Mm. Um, but I think people with celiacs, they've always just, you know, cooked at home because it was safer that way. Because if you went out to a restaurant 30 years ago, you, you took the chance of getting sick. And for them to get sick, it's in bed, you know, like the flu. It's it's not it's not. Well, it, it can be it can be devastating. And I, yeah. mean, I know that Jeff yeah. over at Carroll's Creek, mm-hmm. um, they went nut free. Yeah, and his and it was out of, somewhat out of necessity. It wasn't for him, but his son mm-hmm. has has a very severe peanut allergy, and he was saying that it was just debilitating. They couldn't go out to eat anywhere. Yeah, uh, they had to eat at home all the time. They couldn't travel. Uh, so they bought an RV to do it themselves so they, so they could, cook they could control yeah, cook their there, environment yeah. mm-hmm. and everything else. And when they went to Peanut Free, we did a podcast with them and they were talking about what was involved in it. And as far as, you know, we need to make sure that the flour that we buy is produced. Exactly. they do or yeah. ground or whatever they do to flour in, in yeah, a place in that a place does not also mm-hmm. do, you know, peanut stuff. Exactly. And, yeah. You know, there's no cross contain. And it's not just a matter of like, okay, don't order any more peanuts and wipe down the counters. Because of the severity of allergies that some people will have, as opposed to, you know, somebody might break out in a rash and that's the end of it. And others, yeah. people, it, it can be worse. Yeah. Um, but he said it was, you know, very risky as far as a business goes to say, okay, we're not going to do this. But he says he's seen an influx of business from people going, oh my gosh, this is so great. Yeah, because they can this go product. there and feel safe. Yeah. And the people that loved it were like, yeah, we don't miss the peanuts. We don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, it's not like they were serving, you know, peanuts as the appetizer or nuts as the appetizer. So, but it, it's awesome to be able to have a product that is, you know, able to, I mean, who doesn't like cookies and baked goods and everything yeah, else? Yeah, and then to go to a place that's certified, you know, certified gluten-free, they can walk in and know that if they buy that cookie or the, you know, cake or any of the pastries, 
that they're safe to eat it. I mean, and we offer dairy free and we offer vegan items also. So now you have, because a lot of people with celiacs um, are allergic to casein, so they can't do the milk products. So we offer, you know, the vegan and the dairy free items also. So um, everybody can enjoy it. All right. So here's a question. I mean, now you sound like you're taking all the fun out of bakery when you say, <laughs> say we're, take, we're taking out. I know flour, people think taking. that, but, and, you know, people think that, but actually, I mean, the flavor, you can't tell. Like if I gave you one of our muffins and, had, and and then after you ate it, told you it was vegan, you wouldn't have known that it was vegan. And then, you know, you get those are like, oh, I know there was something wrong with it. And it's like, no, 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 sure. no, no it's, <laughs> I just told you that. So now your head's like telling you, oh, there's something wrong. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, that, that is that is wonderful because, I mean, I yeah. think that as and I, I could be wrong, but as the industry, if, if, for lack of a better word, developed, I mean, you, you talked about finding the right flavoring and finding the right textures and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's and very important, yeah. That, you know, when you, when you sink your teeth into a muffin, uh, you know, you want it to taste and feel, feel like a muffin as opposed to yes. like this, you know, piece of hardened, like, yes. you know, paste from kindergarten, <laughs> whatever it may be. Yeah. And uh, I think that's just really important because it's... Uh, yeah, it's really hard for a person who has celiac disease or is just diagnosed as celiac disease. And now you're telling me that I can't eat anything with wheat, you know, wheat, kumats, spelt, farro, anything that's related to that wheat family. And now they're like, okay, what am I going to do? I had a, you know, a muffin every day for breakfast or I ate pasta for dinner quite often, you know. And so now they're just at a loss and they're, they don't know what to do. But that's why we're here. Uh, all the gluten-free bakeries and the people who make the pastas and the muffins and the cookies and that's so they can, you know, still have a normal life. Because it is, I mean, it's, it, it, they can't go out to eat like they did. They can't. They have to re- clean out their whole entire world of their kitchen. And, yeah, when you, know, you think so. about it, I mean, I mean, okay, so the the gluten is is in in flours and wheats. So wheat, and then anything related to wheat, like spelt, farro, any type of you know, all there's like a list of all of the different ones. Okay, and so, that's and, and, and yeah, you, so wheat is like the major, the main one. Okay, um, they can't digest the gluten, and so you have gluten, and you know when you eat like a baguette or a pizza, and it has that pull and chew and tear well that's the gluten and that's the protein that holds that um the flour the wheat flour together to give that chew and pull so when you take that away um and you don't you can't use that in gluten-free baking because that's what the person is allergic to um then you have to add things in to make that that pool but that's what that's what they're allergic to is that gluten protein that holds the wheat together and um, it gets in their intestines and they can't digest it and then they become ill um, sometimes they're like malnutri- malnutritioned because they don't know what's going on um, but it's because the the villi and in the intestines has you know flattened out and not be able to take any of the um, any like of the you- nutrients in you sound like you've got a medical degree in t- in t- on, t- on top <laughs> I mean, of that You kind of have to, you really have to like <laughs> research everything and understand what, you know, the celiac person is going through. I mean, there's the National Celiac Association, you know, so you can learn through them and beyond celiac. And there's all these different ways so you can learn to make sure that you're doing everything correct in your, your establishment, but also that you're making things that people can eat safely. It's yeah, so it's not just like clean off a little spot in your restaurant or bakery or whatever and hope that it, that flour doesn't get in there. I mean, twenty parts per million is a crumb of bread and like a it's, crumb, and that's what makes an, you that know do it. someone sick. And I mean, so people have different tolerances yeah, for different things. It's, exactly. You you mentioned certified. Yes. Uh, how how does that work? I mean, when I mean. I'm assuming that you go through an organization. I mean, the health department yeah. doesn't really care whether you're. Um, no, the health department. Yeah, it's not part of that. It's um, so we go through gluten free program out of Canada. And um, because when I started the gluten free bakery, it was no wheat or anything related to it ever passes my doorstep. Because once you get it in there, I mean, to try and clean it out. I mean, you know, and you have it's to like have drywall in your house. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like on everything. And so they. Um, have an inspector come in and they inspect everything the flowers that you're making the mixing where you're getting it from and they inspect everything so they know that your establishment is safe 
And, you know, and I told them, for you know, we never let anything, even my employees, when they bring food to work, it has to be gluten free. Um, and sometimes I help, you know, we like supply bread or sometimes we supply, you know, different things for lunches to help out because it can get expensive, sure. <laughs> gluten free, you know, and we, we sell pasta here. So we have, you know. Do you bake your own pasta or make your own pasta? We don't. We um, import it. It's imported from Italy, and then we buy it from a company who imports it from Italy because it's really nice. It's um, okay. Yeah. When you cook it up, um, it has a really nice texture, and, you know, you don't want to the rice pasta from a while back it was dry out or it was chewy or it just was you could tell there was a texture do you ever have like wheat pasta when it first yes, came yeah, out yeah so that kind of weird texture uh -huh. and then put that and then it crumbles yeah yeah <laughs> so that's what it used to be like but now it's um they it's really good now you just have to cook it's it a little good. bit longer and, yeah. and the certification so they and then you basically certify that we are dealing with XYZ supplier and ABC supplier yeah. and they have those yeah. suppliers on their list so they know that they are so the whole mm -hmm. the whole process yeah and even if a flower comes in and the bag is busted it's like I can't you know I can't accept that because I don't know if another bag of flour busted in your on your trip that day so right. yeah we're really um, you know we have to be really particular about what comes in here so for what the are the bacon. products that you that you sell you said you don't you, you sell pasta but you don't you don't um, do it here so what's your your bread and butter I'm assuming is sweets our, yes our sweets um, our lemon bar and our Buckeye brownies are quite popular. Um, and then we have um, a raspberry bakewell bar. It used to be a tart, um, but with things changing, and um, we, we, we put it into a bar instead. Okay. So we have the raspberry bakewell bar, and pretty soon we'll have our um, pecan walnut bourbon, maple bourbon bar coming out. It used to be a tart, and now it's going to be a bar. And then we do cookies especially this time of the year, sure. uh, Christmas cookies. Like we do Christmas cookie boxes. We do like a vegan box. And then we have our, our regular Christmas box with decorated sugar cookies and gingerbread cookies and traditionals like snowball or thumbprint. That's so great. It's just, it's a yeah. great business for businesses that, you know, just uh, want to maybe have, you know, buy cookies once a week or something like that mm -hmm. and have them in the office for that. And, yeah. and you don't know. I mean, you know, it's got to, it's got to suck as an employee with, with celiac or with, with a gluten intolerance and they're, rolling out the you know the brownies and the chocolate chip cookies yeah and like, like Boy, well, they that's sure look good. <laughs> and that's why we do wholesale because we we you know wholesale to the coffee shops um like markets and um offices that want to have product for their um you know employees that they can go and get there and know it's safe and they come individually wrapped so there's no contamination they display them in their coffee shop or at the grocery store you know the customers can pick them up and know this is safe it's wrapped it's labeled you know that's awesome. and well, yeah you, you talked about delivering stuff and we mentioned that uh you were your first place in, in annapolis was at the uh leeward market. leeward market yeah and people have, have seen your your vehicles around now i mean we're all where can we get your product obviously we can come yeah. here to 116 north talbot you can uh anytime i guess nine to five or nine to um, so. monday through friday is pre-order online and then pick up at our window that we um ah. have had here since 2020 and one to three you can pick up your pre-order and then saturday and sunday we're open inside and on saturdays we have specialty saturdays so we do all the things that you can't get online like we have our scones or our apple almond tarts with fresh apples um you know the all different kinds of things that we might come up with like oh let's try this for today and you know that's gluten-free to put out there for saturday okay. so um, yeah so across in, the bay where can we so leeward market uh, in eastport and also bread and butter in eastport monica's great yes monica's great and then you work your way up and um you have brown mustache and rasa on maryland avenue Maryland Avenue, lisa and, and then you have um 49 west coffee yeah. house and then over in the village of west annapolis you have bean rush and they have two two places um, right up in, crownsville. in crownsville and then ceremony coffee well we deliver to russell street and then they supply all their shops in baltimore and that shop oh. and then the one in also in riva um in grano over that's right, new Perry they've Lewis. been there for sure. couple, yeah been there for a couple years um and then you have saverna park so you have uh big bean donut shack blinda bowl 
And then you also have Growls right there in just uh, by a village sure. of West Annapolis. And, and if I forgot anybody cause, um, in Annapolis, <laughs> I'm sorry, because we're growing constantly. And so our production part department like is adding um, new people and sending and shipping or we deliver to them um, all over. I mean, I, I'm, um, as I look around here, I mean, this is a, a big kitchen compared certainly to mine. But <laughs> I, I think, you know, is, is, this seems like a fairly small kitchen it is what well, used to be um so in march we took this other side um this is where this used to be the bakery part where we're okay. sitting right now um which is now our shipping and packing department and then um so that used to just be the kitchen but now we've been able to extend it and then that side of the building is just the bakery so okay the, yeah um, so it's small but we can we can you're putting out put, a lot of, we can I put mean, out a lot in I here. Mean, how much how much is if i walk into growls i mean how, how much of your product am i going to see there is, is, um, is, is, they order like um it depends on they order like five uh, five different items and it's over by the bakery department on the um the little roundabout that they okay. have there and um like our lemon bars our brownies the buckeye brownies lemon bars cookies um that's fantastic yeah. I mean, so, you, you guys have you're and all like certain over the places place. like um, Big Bean carry. They have two establishments also right. on 88, um, Best 88, Gate. yeah, Best Gate. They carry our muffins, and Bean Rush carries our muffins, and then other customers have um, started to pick up the muffins. But then our our famous is the Buckeye Brownie, everybody loves, and the Lemon Bar, and the tarts. Well, the the bars now, right, right. But everybody has a different. You can go a block away and muffins won't sell. I keep using muffins, but that's, that's a, and, um, it, but the muffins will sell here, but a, you know, yeah, but, but yeah. a block away, it's a bar, yeah, it's, 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 like it's, it's a bar block. Yeah. It's like a different, you know, it's a different neighborhood, different taste, different, you know, so. Well, that's, I mean, I mean, do gluten-free keep any better than a standard type of thing? I mean, with the shelf life and stuff like that. I mean, uh, um, I mean, the products we make, the shelf life is, um, you know, last right. um, just because we make it, we make items that last on the shelf. Okay. Um, but it's you have to treat it the same way. Um, like our bread, we don't put preservatives in our bread, so you slice it and either put it in the fridge or the freezer. Um, if it sits out too long and you know the warmth, same as regular bread. Well, regular bread has more preservatives in it. We don't put preservatives, so it'll go off a little quicker. But like the bars and the cookies and all that, they have. Um, really good shelf life and we tell our customers if you know if it's not if it's sitting on your shelf then your customer's wanting something of our product that's different and then um, sure that makes that makes sense so. and uh, you mentioned you know you can pre-order and on the web and mm -hmm. it's glutenfreebakerygirl.com right is yeah glutenfreebakerygirl.com and you can order all your christmas things through there and then we either ship it to you or you can pick it up here in st michael's or we deliver to your home in certain areas all around annapolis we tried it this year for thanksgiving and it went great we did eastport and um, edgewater um like mayo um, mayo road that area in mm -hmm. there um saverna park and and um, all over Annapolis, and it worked great because we just deliver to your door, and you know, and, and then you can meet at Bean Rush um, Cafe in Village of West Annapolis, and, and we do it there because it's um, one of the bigger um, coffee shops. Sure. So, um, and so we're not in in you know interrupting what's going on in the business. We just have a little spot. In farmers, they can, they can pick up there. Are you in farmers markets at all? We or? don't do farmers no. markets okay. now. Yeah. So we find it's best to do wholesale or and then online and, and direct consumer. Yeah, and, and direct stuff. consumer. Yeah. It was funny for Thanksgiving I had ordered a first time I had ever done it but a fresh turkey out of a farm in mm -hmm. Baltimore and yeah. they they're you know again it's a Baltimore County business as you are mm -hmm. a Talbot County business yes. but they're they're bringing the business to Anne Arundel County, and I mean they delivered it to me the day before Thanksgiving. The guy, you know, put it in there, and uh, yeah. they don't know the backstory of the turkey. We named him Fred, and <laughs> we, we figured he was probably running around on Monday. But yeah, uh, you know, but it, but it's it's awesome that it really sort of opens it up, and that you've really sort of embraced the the idea. Of say, hey, you know, you. You know, it's no longer that I can. Okay, we'll we'll talk about your neighbor over here, Olivin's Oil. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you come down here and you say, "Oh, we, while we're down here, we got to get this." Okay, right. and I can come down to say, "I can say, oh my gosh, you know, I got to get the gluten free bakery girl," but I don't need to do that. 
I can get I can go down to Bean Rush. You can. I, I yeah. can go to Bread and Butter mm-hmm. and pick it up. So that's yeah, awesome. You can go to all those um, all those different places in Annapolis, and you know, and, and then order it online too. You know, because if you're out, you know, farther outside, you know, that's right. And I'm sure I can tell Monica or somebody that hey, I I like the. The new was it brandy bar or something like that? Oh, the maple bourbon the pecan maple bourbon. bar, yeah. You know, so. like those, and she can say, you know, she can go up and say, "Hey, Trisha, you know, throw in a couple more of those bars. I think we're gonna." Yeah, that's and that's what they the customers need to tell their where they're buying at, um, what their favorite items are, or hey, do they have this? You know, so they can have it there. So right. it makes it easier for them to get the product. Right. Well, what, yeah. What is your favorite product that you sell? Oh, what is my favorite product that I sell? I mean, you, See, you, okay, you're star, you're star. It's <laughs> two o'clock in the morning. You can't sleep. Something business is keeping you up. And you say, I, I'm hungry. You come down here. You open up the front door and you get one thing. What's the one thing you're reaching for? Um, I really like the snowball cookie. It's a shortbread cookie. It's a traditional vintage. It used, it's either known as a Mexican wedding cookie, a okay. Russian tea cake. It's a it's shortbread. It's got walnuts in it, powdered sugar. And it's simple and tasty. Yeah, that's probably what I, but I change every, I mean, I change all the time because I have all these different products and my flavors, you know, what do I want this week? (laughs) Right, right. So right now it's uh, gingerbread men. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. (laughs) Well, uh, sort of following up on that, coming up from the chef world and being a pastry chef down at the Inn and Perry Cabin and uh, your own personal chef business and stuff like that. Outside of the baked goods, what what are your favorite dishes? What do you like? Um, Instead of baked goods, um... I like to do salmon at home. I like a lot. I'll do salmon um, with like a Berblanc sauce, which is lemons and white wine and that. Um, and then I turn it in. I like to make it extra because I like to turn it in. It's called Kedgri and it's salmon and rice. And you can put peas in there and some type of a vinaigrette sauce. So, nice. Yeah. It's a British thing. So it's Do you good. absolutely love being in business for yourself? I do. Yeah. I Does do. it absolutely keep you at night, awake at night? And, exactly. Yes. And stress and yes. the whole nine yards. The whole but you everything. Wouldn't, yeah. Wouldn't trade it for the world. No, wouldn't trade it for the world. Yeah, it's it it's all of that, and you know, you can go home and cry your eyes out one night, or be you know tearful the next. It's just it's up and down, and you just you love it, even though the up the yeah, you love it. <laughs> it it really is. And you've got a business that's a happy business. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I imagine, you know, lawyers We're all and doctors. Happy here. Yeah. Well, lawyers <laughs> and doctors, I mean, they got, you know, sometimes they got good people coming in bad, but I mean, you know, it's, you know, no, nobody's miserable coming here buying, buying stuff. <laughs> yeah. You know, the, you know the, how could, yeah, walk into a pastry, you know, a bakery and you can't walk out empty handed. There's too many delicious things. <laughs> Absolutely true. Well, you mentioned before we start recording, you mentioned that you have lived down here in St. Michael's for many years. Mm-hmm. As a local, any hidden gems that I need to know about as far as like where to eat? I mean, okay, we can have the Inn Perry Cabin. I mean, that's that's the yeah. low, that's that's very good low hanging fruit. Yeah, um, um, you could go where all the locals go to Chesapeake Landing down the road here. Um, they bring in their own fish, and okay. um, it's safe to eat there. Um, as a celiac, one of my customers um, it works there, and so she's made sure to train everybody to understand. You know, when someone orders, oh, you know, you, you really shouldn't have that. It's this. You might want to try this. It's you know safer for um, celiacs and gluten free people. Um, oh, that that yeah. brings up a really good point. I just just yeah. thought of that though. As somebody that is gluten intolerant or has celiac disease, uh-huh. I mean, obviously, if I want to be uber, uber safe, I, I stay at home and I make my own stuff. Yeah. Uh, but is a traditional meal able to be modified? I mean, I know I can go and say, you know, hold the onions out of the, you know, off of the burger or something like that. Yeah. And that's a real easy thing to do. But as somebody that is gluten intolerant, can I go to a local you know. A lot of more, a lot more restaurants nowadays are really trying to make sure that they have um, items. Like if you wanted a hamburger, they do try to make sure they have the gluten free bread, so you can have that burger. Um, and then they're also teaching their staff to have a spot that's safe, um, so they can make the burger and get it out safely. So, but, so I, I wouldn't make the meant, assumption or? that yeah, yeah, no, yeah. absolutely. But I wouldn't make the assumption that that is a certified right. space. So I mean, there it's, are it's some as certifi- clean as we possibly can Exactly. Be. Yeah. So you really have to, you really still have to be careful. But there are restaurant, gluten-free restaurants out there. I think there is um, a couple in Baltimore um, that are all gluten-free and, and That's safe. wonderful that everybody, so. you know, that 
But it, people are accepting it more and more in the restaurants. Well, it's just in general, people are. I, I love that people are becoming more inclusive as far as restaurants go. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, I mean, I think oh, those freaky vegan people. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know, yeah, you know. it's it. But yeah, it, there's this stigmatism, I guess, about well, like vegan or gluten free, and I would have people come in and want to argue about gluten free, and I'm like, it's they're just eating different. It's not. And it's their life. They have to eat that way. It's it's not a religion. I'm not, you know, I'm right, not, right. <laughs> it's then, not committing you. you know, there's a cupcake yeah, store down the yeah, road. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's why, you know, you don't need to come and, you know, harass me because I'm gluten free. I'm doing this for the people that, that need it. And if I, and I do, some people will come in, oh, gluten free. And I'm like, wait, 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 here, have a cookie on me, you know, go and enjoy it and then make your decision. And they'll, they'll take it, and usually they'll come back and be like, oh, my gosh, that was really good. Can I have? Another, can I get another one? <laughs> right, right. You know? No, no, so, I want to buy another one. Yeah, exactly. That is wonderful. Well, if you're looking yeah. for any yumminess, you want to go to glutenfreebakerygirl.com uh, if you're sitting at home. If you're not sitting at home and you want to get in your car, you can come to 116 North Talbot Street in St. Michael's. or On the weekend or if you pre-ordered pickup during the week. On the weekend, week. <laughs> or, right, through your fancy window yeah. on the side of the building. <laughs> or, you know, come in and shop inside right. on the weekends, right. yeah. Now, the window, I'm assuming that was a COVID response? Yeah, actually, it worked out perfect. Um, COVID happened, you know, everyone quarantined. And I turned around, I'm like, what are you going to do? I'm like, oh my gosh, we have a window here with all the glass shelves that we put all our product in. And we have a pickup window. It just, it just worked out. I was like, oh my gosh, we're all set. So we just, the customers would come up, shop in the window, and then they would come to the window and tell I'll us what they want. And yeah, exactly. That's great. It just yeah. What's the future? Where are you looking to go? Um, bigger on the wholesale side. Yeah, okay. really enjoy the wholesale side and. Um, so what, when you lot. say bigger than that, I mean, is it more um, product or more is it? Pro- not more product. Um, I, I could go crazy on more product, <laughs> but I really had to scale myself and say, this is what we're making. Um, Cause you can really, you know, go crazy on what, but you don't want to string yourself out to where you can't keep the good quality of the products that you already have. So growing bigger in the wholesale department and, but always keeping the retail side because people love to come to your bakery and, sure. and get that. But the but, bakery is a high touch, uh, you know, I mean, yes, obviously you've got the retail and you've got the distribution and everything else, but yeah. I mean, you know, there's, there's nothing like smelling a fresh loaf of, of bread baking or cookies. Mm-hmm. I mean, this, this place smells wonderful. Yeah. Uh, and, <laughs> I was standing in line the other day and someone's like, I smell cookies. I'm like, oh, that's me. <laughs> good so marketing. they're like, oh, I buy your stuff. Trisha, good marketing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Rub a little bit yeah. of cookie juice on me before exactly. I go. Exactly. <laughs> what smells like cookies? Now I'm craving cookies. <laughs> What's like, it's like the hotel, some of the fancy hotels have their own signature scent that, you know, mm-hmm. you go down. I know. Yeah. Uh, well, smell is, is huge. Yes, I, I know. It is. Uh, every time I smell Chanel number no. five, I, I immediately look around for my grandmother because that oh. was like her. Like, yeah. You know, she Brings back memories. <laughs> is she still there? But I mean, would you look to expand to a larger kitchen? I mean, oh, yeah. Eventually, we're going to have to. Yeah. Yeah. I'll grow to the gills, you know, as much as we can here. And then I'll have to move into a bigger kitchen. And you have to have so. a, your own kitchen, too, at that point, for the most part. I mean, you're unless you're sharing with another. Oh, yeah. Gluten. You can't. And especially doing gluten free, you can't really. Sh- you can't share. Like, you can't share the same air system. Um, because if someone else it's down pick, the road is the restaurant and it gets. Of- yeah. And then. So it has to Boy, be all of these little things that yeah. you don't think about. Yeah. yeah. Get down to Leeward, get down to Grawls, get down to Bean Rush, get down to uh, Monica, down at Bread and Butter. You said 49 West? 49 West. You've got yeah. Brown Mustache yeah. in Annapolis. Brown Mustache. Brown Mustache. Oh, and so you have um, over on Best Gate, you have the Big Bean. But, right. And, also, and Ceremony. And Ceremony. All, the one on Russell Street and also in Riva. And then they have all their shops in Baltimore. And we have uh, we have uh, quite a few customers in Baltimore that also carry our product all the way down to the beach. Rehoboth, uh, Bethany Beach. Um, and it's over into um, to St. Mary's County. Congratulations. Um, so we have, yeah, we're all over. So if you go online, there's a little button, little house that says where to buy. It'll tell you all the places that we carry, that carry our products. Congratulations so, to thanks. you, Trisha. This Thank 
such you. a great story. <laughs> Thank you. Gluten Free Bakery Girl again. Glutenfreebakerygirl.com is the website. Um, come on down on the weekend. And it's a perfect time to come down on the weekend and say, Michael's. Uh, Especially with the holidays. Oh, exactly. De- yeah, with Midnight Madness and Christmas in St. Michael's. Definitely a good time. It can't, it, it can't be beat. But thank yeah. you so much for your time. <laughs> and, you know, thanks for, you know, helping out these people that really yeah, never got to enjoy it before. It's my passion, what I do. And I love doing it. And I love being able to make the desserts and that for people to enjoy that, you know, want to have a a normal life of enjoying, you know, food and life. So, absolutely. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for listening to this week's local business spotlight. Please make sure to visit ionanapolis.net for all your local news, events, and opinion. And in case you haven't already, please subscribe to the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief, where we bring you all the day's local news direct to your phone, tablet, or computer in about 10 minutes. It comes to you at 6 a.m. every Monday through Friday, and you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.